Hey guys, hope you're having a great day today. All right, today is going to be a colossal, an epic, a gigantuous, gigantuous, of those even words, freezer meal making day. Are you guys ready for this? I am ready for this. I like to do this like once a year because it's kind of like the end of winter, beginning of spring right now. I love to have my freezer full of meals. I don't have to worry about making anything. Now, we will have to do some food, you know, some kind of prepping to the food, some cooking, some little different things we'll have to do, make some sides, things like that. But the majority of the work will be done today. And that to me, ah, it's just such a good relief because I know this is the time of year. We like to get out. We like to do things. We're extra busy. It's a good time to have a lot of freezer meals on hand. I do do this through the year, not usually this big, but, and I even haven't this year because this year has been a whole lot different with everything going on. But today is my day to do it. I'm like, I am ready. I've got a big giant list right here. This is my super technical list. I have got raw chicken meals. I've got cooked chicken meals. I've got ground beef raw meals. I've got regular ground beef, regular meals. I've got some sausage and I've got some like roast, that kind of steak meals. And then, and then, this is about 50 meals right here. And then if I get to it, I've got soups. I've got soups and these are our pasta dishes. I don't have to really do. A couple of other fun things. Egg rolls, mix some egg rolls. I don't know if I'll do that today. We'll even see if we get to this list. I don't know, it's six o'clock right now in the morning. I did, last week you saw what I did, all my batch cooking, getting food ready. Well, it is the next day for me. I know it's the next week for you, but I am ready. I got up early, I'm like, okay, sat, had to work a little bit, and I'm like, I am ready to prepare. So this time around, we are doing a whole lot of different meals, which is awesome. Some of the same, but a lot of different. My kids are getting older. If you have younger ones, do not go crazy, watch my video and list all the things, and they go, I'm gonna make this, make this, make this. Your kids will not eat it and it'll be a waste of your time. <laughs> Stick to what your family likes, what they know. That's all we say. And just throw in a few extra ones. My kids are getting older where they will branch out and try something different. It's not so much like, oh, I'm not eating that because it's got a mushroom in it. Oh, I'm not eating that because it's got green stuff in it. They're getting older, their palates are changing. They will change, moms, and they'll try something different. So that is what I'm gonna do today. I am excited. I'm like, okay, I was a little bit tired yesterday from doing all my stuff last week for you guys, and I'm like, I can do this. So I just got my stuff. It was more about preparing and getting ready. So today will be a breeze. It will go super quick, I hope. We'll see. We're just gonna see how much we can get done for the day. Pack it that freezer full. I'm gonna stuff it, stuff it, stuff it. So there are freezer meals, so I don't have to worry at all for food. So you guys ready to get ready with our day? We are ready. I'm gonna go get an apron and we're gonna get ready to start making our colossal freezer meals for the month, large family style. All right, the first thing I'm gonna put together, I'm gonna do my raw chicken. I figured let's get that part out of the way. So I'm gonna do Korean chicken lettuce wraps. These were something I found from a magazine years and years ago and saved it on my laptop. I'm like, I need to make that. So. I'm gonna put the ingredients on the screen, what you put in here. I'm gonna take my chicken, I'm gonna slice it, like kind of in strips because um, I probably will cook this on the skillet. All you'll do, leave this in the bag, put it in the freezer. When you go to heat it, just like cook it on a skillet or you can put it on your grill if you want. I'm just doing it on my skillet. And then you serve it and you can serve it on lettuce, like a lettuce, wrap it up, put some rice in there, some cucumbers it has on there. So. English cucumber slices, it says, with green onions. So I'm gonna chop up my chicken, put it in a bag, and put all our my marinade in there. Leave it, it's gonna be easy dish. So Korean chicken lettuce wraps up with the recipe on the screen. All right, the next one I'm gonna do is a chicken lettuce wraps. We're doing a couple wraps here. This is simple. This is just chicken with taco seasoning. So I've got my super spicy one here that I don't like, that, that's all they had, so I had to order it. And so I've got the real stuff finally. So I'm gonna just mix these two together. I'm gonna leave the chicken whole and then when I go to make it, I will cook it and then I will slice it thin. So this is served um, on chicken and lettuce, obviously, but it's served with a pico guacamole. So they use avocados, garlic, jalapeno, onions, sea salt, 
and tomatoes chopped up. So I wrote that in the bag here so that I make sure that I make that with it. And it's just easy, simple meal. So I'm just gonna put a couple chicken breasts in your hole with the taco seasoning, very easy. All right, the next one we're gonna do is Indian chicken. Something a little bit different, one of my viewers recommended. So I'm gonna take some chicken, I'm gonna chop it up in chunks. This, usually you cook it in a skillet first and then add all the ingredients and bake it, but I'm just gonna chop it up and then we'll just put it in the pressure cooker, save some steps. So I'm gonna put up the recipe on the screen. Um, you serve this over rice. So when this is done, I'll put in my pressure, like when I go and make it, I'll put it in the pressure cooker and bake it for about an hour, make sure the chicken's done and then serve it over rice. Simple. So here's a recipe for Indian chicken. That one smells really, really good. I've never made anything like that. It smells good. I've kind of, like I've made curries before and that reminds me of that flavor, that smell. So, all right, another one done. The next one I'm gonna make is a, I say honey mustard chicken, but it has Miracle Whip in it. So it's very simple. It's just chicken breast and you just coat it with Miracle Whip, honey, and mustard. That's it, it's really, really simple. And so I'm gonna put that together in the bag, that's easy. And then when I go to cook it, I can either bake it in the oven, and it just leaves a nice coating on the chicken, or you can put it on the grill, whatever you wanna do. I'll probably do mine in the oven. Okay, the next one I'm gonna do is Asian honey chicken. So I'm gonna take my chicken, cut it up in cubes, I'm gonna um, coat it in flour, put that in the bag. Then when I go to make it, I'll put that in the skillet and fry it with some oil to get a little bit crispy, just a little bit on the outside. It's not gonna be super crispy, just at least browned. And then I'm gonna put a separate sauce pack inside that bag and I'm just gonna pour that over top and then heat it over rice really heat it. Heat it up and then serve it over rice. Really delicious. Everything's in the bag. I know I have all the ingredients so I don't have to worry about trying to find them. Asian honey chicken. All right, the next dishes I'm gonna do are gonna be stir fries. So I'm gonna chop a bunch of my chicken because the next four are just like the last one, right? Cut it in flour and then make a sauce pack. So I'm just gonna save myself some time, chop a bunch, put it in a bowl, mix it with flour, and then I'll put it into bags and then add the individual sauces.
All right, I've got three here for stir fry. I've got a stir fry, real simple one I'm gonna do with the marinade and then you just cook it on the skillet and then you can just serve it over rice. Really simple with veggies too if you want. And then I've got, I've actually got these sweet and sour packets. I know, I can make my own homemade sauce, which I'm going to in a minute if you just wait. I have these and I've never used them. So I'm gonna make, put these in here with my sweet and sour chicken and then all you do is cook the chicken first and you add that mixture over and serve it over rice. And then general, the so, TSO, so chicken. We're gonna do that one in here. So I'm gonna divide the chicken up here and I'll add the ingredients, put it on the screen. Now all those stir fries you can make from scratch. You can do that. I was just gathering what I had. I had them in my pantry for a while. I'm like, I gotta use those up. So the sweet and sour tastes really, really good. So hopefully it'll be delicious. Just the key will be to fry the meat first and then add the liquid after it. So, all right, stir fries done. All right, the next dish I'm gonna do is sweet and sour chicken. Basically like what I, what I just did for the stir fry, but this you layer, I'll put it in a bag, but you can layer it in your pressure cooker or your, your slow cooker and just let it slow cook all day. So I'm gonna just put it in here. And then when I wrote on here to thicken it with three tablespoons of cornstarch and a quarter cup of water, serve over rice. So I'll throw all this in the pressure cooker, let it bake, um, so you can do slow cook or do a high for a few hours. And then when it's ready, just add cornstarch and water, mix it together, and then add it all in there and then let it thicken, serve over rice, really easy. Alright, this tastes a little bit. The other one had ketchup in it, and that was bad, but this is a little bit better how I like it. I think I like this. I'm just gonna pour this. Let me show you. Pour this in here. Oh yes, because this is all gonna layer inside the pressure cooker or crock pot and then just thicken it. That's perfect. Another meal done. All right, the next one I'm gonna put together is gonna be for baked or fried chicken. Miss Deb has got me inspired to do some fried chicken on my little cast iron griddle over here. So we're gonna see if I get to that point. So I'm just gonna take, I've got a whole huge pack of drumsticks right here. We're not gonna eat all these in one sitting. So there is plenty there. I don't even know if I'll do that's one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven of those. Uh, I don't know if that's too many. I'll split this between two meals along with some chicken breast. I'm going to coat it in milk. Just put it in milk, let it sit in there. Put it in the bag, and then I'm going to add, um, I have one box of batter mix because I got this at the discount store. But what I'm going to do is um, 
add a little bit of my homemade breadcrumbs with some garlic pepper seasoning to it to kind of stretch it a little bit more. So then when I go to do it, I'll just take it out and just stick it directly in the oil or put it in a pan in the oven to bake it. Very simple. You're growing in the dark Okay, so I went through and I divided up the rest of my raw chicken because there was a lot of it and I definitely overplanned. So I have one whole package that I put in my pressure cooker so I can do more because I'd rather have some cooked for soups and things. And then I divided up what I need for my fresh stuff. Some of the chicken was like big slices like this. So I just kind of took out real quick, like this is pineapple salsa chicken. That'll be better, more like a patty. And then I put more like the little pieces in there because when I got my chicken, it was just a different kind of restaurant quality kind. So I've got extra for my chicken here. I'm gonna do a pineapple salsa chicken first. I just put the chicken breast in here. I got two bags, so I was just gonna do one. And it's simple, it's just a can of pineapple chunks and salsa. Very simple, so I'm gonna divide that up between the two. And then you can either cook it in the pressure cooker, slow cooker, or on your grill. It's really good, very simple to make. Okay, this next one I'm gonna do is called chicken italiano. You basically cook it over spaghetti. So I'm going to, I have my chicken here, and I'm gonna put a jar of spaghetti sauce in there. I'm gonna add a little bit, this one's a white, of diced tomatoes, and then I'm gonna add a half a cup of Italian dressing in it. That's what you mix in there. You just go cook it, simmer it, and then you just serve over spaghetti, simple. The next is gonna be for lemon chicken. I'm just gonna put some oil in here with lemon juice and some spices, and I'll put it on the screen and just put it in here. That's easy, you just cook it on the grill. It's very simple to make. All right, next I'm gonna do is some grilled chicken. I'm gonna put it in a bag and I'm gonna serve it with coconut lime rice. You just take a can of coconut milk and place a water with rice and some lime. Oh, it'll be delicious. So I'm just gonna put the ingredients on the screen and I'm just gonna put this in here. This is easy, cook it on the smoker or the grill or the skillet or the broiler, whatever you wanna do. One more chicken dish. This is just another grilled pita chicken, very simple. And I'm going to make it like with, um, when I go to serve it, I'll cook it on the smoker, slice it up, and we'll serve it on pita with tzatziki dressing. I've got some uh, fat-free Greek yogurt. I'm gonna mix in there with some lemon juice and cucumbers. Very simple and easy recipe. So basically another grilled sauce in here, except I'll add um, oregano to it. I think it's oregano. What's it? Yes, oregano. So I'm gonna put this in the back here. All right, so when you go to cook these, like some, obviously, it's not gonna mix perfectly in here, so let your bag thaw by putting it in the refrigerator, and then you can swish around and get all those spices in there. This I've been adding is a salt-free seafood seasoning. I know they're like, what is that? But it has like a lemony 
garlicky kind of flavor. So I've been adding that. It's got lemon peel in it. We don't do seafood, so it has no salt in it. So this has been really good. Like I added this to the grilled pita, also to my other chicken, my lemon chicken. I made it, it's like a nice sweeter, but got that little flavor to it. So, all right, all my chicken is done. I've got it all sitting here. I'm gonna go stick it in my freezer. I'm gonna shove it in that freezer and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, cleaned up the kitchen. I'm moving on to my cooked chicken recipe. So I'm gonna make a chicken lo mein. This, I'm gonna make the chicken with the little sauce mixture, put it in a bag. That is what you put in the freezer. I'm not gonna put mine in the freezer because I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator and eat it tomorrow. So but to serve this, you're gonna serve it with broccoli. I'm gonna do snow peas. I've got bok choy, I have bean sprouts, carrots, and red bell pepper, and cabbage and some thin spaghetti. That's how we're gonna make ours. I'm just gonna put the chicken in a bag with the sauce. Just gonna kind of saute the veggies a little bit till they're tender crisp and then you're just gonna cook the noodles separately. Add these all together in one pot. It's gonna be a delicious lo mein, chicken lo mein dish. I wanna get to your clothes, gotta get it right now. I wanna push all the limits with you right now. Okay, that's all I'm gonna put in the bag. Doesn't look like much, but if you wanted to freeze this, you could. Then I'm just gonna add veggies to it and the noodles, so this one is done. The next thing I'm gonna do is chicken jambalaya. Just gonna mix it all together in the bag and then we'll add the rice to it when we go to cook it. I have done it in the pan and froze it. The rice is okay that way, it just gets a little bit drier if you leave it in there longer. So I'm just gonna do all the, the chicken, the sausage, and the wet ingredients. Stick in the pressure cooker and add two cups of rice to it and then probably one more cup of water, two more cups of water to it to cook it. All right, I chopped up the onions and the peppers, so I don't have to do any more, hopefully, today. So I'm gonna do the chicken jambalaya. I am gonna do the dried rice in there, and then all I have to do is put it in the pressure cooker. I was like, I wasn't going to, but I, I will. We're gonna add this, the vegetarian, no chicken broth, just as our liquid. So there's four cups in here, so we'll just add two cups of rice to it. All the rest of the ingredients put together and stick it in the freezer. When we go to cook it, we'll just put it in the pressure cooker on a rice setting, and it'll make perfect, really good tasting chicken jambalaya. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is chicken eddy. We haven't made chicken eddy in a really, really long time, so I saw it and I'm like, we need to make that again. You are basically, it's spaghetti pasta, it's chicken. You use cream mushroom cream and chicken soup, but I'm gonna use my homemade cream mushroom soup, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of the vegetarian, you no know, chicken broth in there for that chickeny flavor. You do onions, bell pepper, and celery, and you can add cheese to it as well. And cheese, and that's it, and just cook it together in your pressure cooker. I'm like, I'm gonna do a slow cooker setting after the pasta is cooked, real simple.
Okay, see how concentrated the soup is? This is the one I made yesterday, so that would be like one can of soup right there. So all of that making that homemade was a lot of extra soup made. And you can freeze this. When you go to um, eat it, if you were to eat it like a soup, use like an immersion blender. It'll help get that kind of separate a little bit. So use an immersion blender to cut or a regular blender to mix it all up, but you can just freeze it to stick it into your casseroles. And that's it. So I'm gonna add my cheese to this and my chicken broth. And then the chicken eddy will be done. So put noodles, a pound of spaghetti in with this and just do it like on your pot on the stove. All right, I'm on to the stuffing shells part of my chicken here. So I wanted to use jumbo shells. I know you can layer it in lasagna. My kids don't really love lasagna. I guess it's okay. Maybe it's, it's just, I know it's just the noodle, but when I made the shells, they actually ate everything. So I went to go buy them, I ordered them. They didn't have any, they didn't even have any at the store. So I ended up getting the manicotti ones which are going to be, you know, so much fun. I'll just take the time and fill them up, get them all filled, so we're gonna do that. So the first one I'm gonna make is just a chicken stuffed shell, really simple. So I'm gonna put the ingredients in the bowl here. It's a box of chicken stuffing. I'm gonna add some of my shredded chicken and corn, that's it. We're gonna, and if I have to have a little bit of wet ingredients, I'll add some um, no chicken broth. You can get regular, I just got this, this was on sale, so I got that. And then mix it so it's wet, I'm gonna shove it in those shells. Right now, microwaving. I I did chicken broth and bless you, mixing. Of course, cornstarch just to make a little gravy. To pour on top, you can do cream of chicken soup, whatever you want. I just have that, so that's what I'm gonna do. All right, here goes the much fun. So, you have your manicotti here. Don't mind my nails, I feel really bad, I don't feel bad, but my nails are all in the stages of getting redone, so I have like missing polish. Working yesterday, this one chipped off, so I apologize for the ugly nails. Just have to go get them done, but I didn't wanna do it before I did this. So, these are gonna be, I don't know, I might end up slicing these and then filling them. I feel like it might be kind of impossible to shove it in there. I'm gonna try my best. I'm gonna try my best and put a thin layer of the gravy. This is just chicken broth. Look at that, and cornstarch. So I'll put that in the bottom, spread that, and then I'll just start coating, putting it on. We're try shoving them in there and putting them in there. We're gonna make this work. That's what you do, you adapt and overcome. Just because I couldn't get jumbo shells, that's okay, we'll use these. If I couldn't use these, I could use pasta, any kind of pasta to layer it as well. Was that painstaking? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Some of you are probably watching going, there's a better way to fill these. I know, probably is. We'll get it though. Not horrible, but at least I'll get them shoved. So there's only 14 in a package, so I'm gonna make up exactly 14 in this pan. I'm gonna put the camera back so you don't have to see my great up close stuffing skills. expected it was easier there was a couple that were cut it was easier to use your fingers and shove it in there so i did that and then a couple had like a cut on them so i just sliced open stuck it in there and put them seam side down but that's it this will be delicious i have one little container left instead of trying to make i might have more left over we'll see but if not that can be a side for a dinner dish all right let me cover this with foil and that's when we're done right, the next stuff show i'm going to do is a stuffed tetrazzini so this is so like there's i've had turkey tetrazzini and had more like the celery green pepper and mushrooms i remember i'm gonna do mine a little bit different because you always do i'm gonna take in my i'm gonna have a chicken mixture i'm gonna put some green pepper and onion in it and then a little bit of cheese in there and then i'll use that mixture to sh and a little bit of is that gonna be it chicken broth i'll do a little too much just to make it a little bit wet and then i'll shove that in the shells and then i'm gonna go to coat it for my gravy is going to be my mushroom soup so i'm gonna use my mushroom soup in there a little bit of chicken broth to kind of thin it out and then that's gonna be good i think that i'm gonna do that sprinkle a little cheese on top yep i'm looking at how i can make this my own so i will do that so i'll do the chicken onions and green peppers mix that together if i have to do a little bit of wet of the chicken broth i will stuff that in the shells and then i'll do gravy will be the cream mushroom soup and with just a little bit of broth to stretch it out that's easy there you go chicken tetrazzini delicious
All right, the next thing I'm gonna do for the other stuffed manicotti is gonna be a chicken Alfredo stuffed shell. So I'm gonna have broccoli in it as well. So I'm going to take the chicken, broccoli, mix that together with a little bit of sauce that I'm gonna be making over there, stuff that in the shells, and then we'll pour Alfredo sauce over top. I'm gonna make a homemade Alfredo sauce to go. We usually use jar stuff, but I'm gonna do homemade this time. All right, I'm gonna do chicken Alfredo stuffed shells. All I did was take some broccoli here and loosely, my spoon in here, loosely chop it. I'm gonna put some chicken in there, a little bit of sauce just to kind of mix it, and I'm gonna stuff the shells with it, and then I'll put the remainder homemade sauce on top. Really easy, this will be delicious. Okay, so all my cooked chicken, for the main part meals, there's a few more like soups and stuff that I might get to, it just depends. A couple of casseroles that I have on the other list, but we'll see if we get to those. But I still have a whole container of chicken, which is really good. Um, I definitely planned more than less, which I'm happy for that. I'd rather be not in the negative and be have the surplus, because you can always freeze it and use it for something else. So all the chicken is done. That last little bag I put out for when we have like a, we're gonna make a homemade, homemade Alfredo sauce, and we just have chicken on the side with it. So now I'm on to my beef raw. Now yesterday, Last week I made my meatloaf, so those two are done. I have two of those, which is awesome. So those are in the freezer. I was looking all over for my Salisbury steak, and I'm like, where did I put this Salisbury steak in every freezer? And I'm like, it's not here. And then I remembered, oh, the refrigerator. So I have two cans of that. I'm gonna make a gravy, a beef onion gravy for that real quick, and then just pour it on top, and then just put that in the freezer so it can freeze salad. And then I'm gonna move on to my meatballs. I have all my meatballs here. I just wrote, remember these are frozen. So I'm just gonna add all the ingredients to them and put them back in the freezer, that'll be easy. So. First one's gonna be Salisbury steak. We're gonna do that one. And I'm just gonna do, basically I'll probably just mix it in a bowl instead of cooking it. I'm thinking out loud. I'll do that. Basically I'm gonna put beef broth in a bowl. I might even use some veggie broth if I have some. I'll probably do that. And onion, and I have some green pepper there. And we'll add a little, maybe, I don't know, mushroom. Maybe a little bit of cream mushroom. And then any spices, garlic, that kind of thing. And just pour it over top, cover these, put them in the freezer, and then I'll go to bake them in the oven when I do for my Salisbury steak, really easy. This is one that you just kind of taste it and make sure that it's good for. I just added the beef broth and I had some veggie broth in there. I had two packets of onion soup mix. I put those in there. The onions and peppers were real on top and made it taste great. A little pepper, a little garlic, all good to go. All right, when you put this in the freezer, make sure it's a flat, flat spot. So I have a small refrigerator right here. I think I'm gonna take whatever's in there right now out and put this in there so I'll make sure it's super flat so it freezes solid. This will be great over mashed potatoes, which we don't eat, crooked camera, noodles, or any um, even rice will work too. All right, first one's gonna be Chinese meatballs. I'm gonna put the recipe on the screen. I'm just gonna mix this all together, pour it in with the meatballs. We'll just bake it all. We can either cook it on the stove or in the pressure cooker, however you want to. We can add some veggies in here as well when we go to cook it, like some, um, if you have some stir fried veggies. All right, the next one I'm gonna do is Mongolian meatballs. Now, I'm gonna substitute because I am running low on my soy. I, I use liquid aminos. I totally did not have enough, which is bad. But I found this in my cupboard. This stuff, I don't even know how to say this, but looked it up. It's got vinegar in it, kind of like the soy, and a little bit of hot pepper and garlic. So I'm gonna have to substitute this because, and then I won't put in it. So if you see me not pour in something, it's because it's in this already, and I just need to ration out my stuff. All 
All right, I'm gonna do some, I just got some war, I wonder if you have workers comp for YouTube, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was just making food and I just flung my hand and I had an open can over here of um, crushed pineapple, or pineapple, and my hand just smashed right onto it as I was doing, I don't even know what I was doing, I was mixing something, and it hit it perfectly and just sliced open. Like really deep my skin, I'm like, that's awesome. So don't mind the band-aid in my hand, it's good, it doesn't hurt, it's covered, it's good. We're gonna be good, so we're gonna keep going, keep going. Um, if I need to stop, I will. But we're gonna make Swedish meatballs now. So this one, I'm just gonna basically put some beef broth in my bowl here. I'm gonna put some my cream mushroom soup, sour cream, a little bit of green pepper, a little bit of onion, pepper, and just mix it up and pour it in there. If you don't mix up with the sour cream, it'll get clumpy and separate when you go to make it. So make sure you mix that sour cream in there really good. This is easy. We'll put it over noodles, over rice, over potatoes, anything you want, or even plain. All right, the next one I'm gonna do is Hawaiian meatballs. This is gonna be delicious. I'm gonna put the rest of those pineapples in there. They smashed and I cut my finger open with. We're gonna do that. All the ingredients I'll put in here. Remember, I'm gonna use my gyoza sauce because you're supposed to add vinegar and um, soy and a little bit of red pepper. So instead of doing that, I will do this. So let's mix this all up. The last meatball is just my Greek meatballs. These are gonna stay as is. I'll probably end up cooking these in the air fryer and then I'm gonna make a tzatziki um, sauce and just for dipping. That'll be easy. So my meatballs are done. I'm gonna put these in the freezer. Let me try to shove these somewhere. All right, next I'm gonna go into my ground beef. I got all the raw ones and the meatballs done, which already were raw yesterday, but neat. Now these are the cooked ones. I have this that I made last month in my freezer it's all my ground beef i cook it when i get it i cook it and i put veggies with it so there's like kale and here's spinach and carrots and peppers and onions and zucchini everything you want puree it up and put it in here the kids won't even notice it and it makes it taste delicious when i said what to people i'm like it's tinted green because it's got spinach in it <laughs> not because it's old and so the first one i'm gonna do is flatbread tacos this is simple it's just taco, their meat, taco seasoning, and then usually you add pinto beans. I'm gonna add chili beans because I have that, it's the same thing. I have a lot of these on hand, so I'm gonna use that. Just mix it together, put it in a bag, and then when we go to serve it, we're gonna take a biscuit, like a refrigerated biscuit, and we're gonna roll those out and cook those over on the skillet, and they get flat like a pancake. And then you top it with sour cream and ranch we usually mix together, the meat mixture and some cheese, lettuce, salsa, is really, really good. So this will be simple. I'll just mix this up together, put it in the bag, and then uh, freeze it for flatbread tacos, one of our very favorite meals. I'm gonna do two bags for taco night. I'm gonna do, um, if I had to stretch this, I would take one pound here and then use like just with refried beans. Mostly I have refried beans, but there's more of us, they like the meat. So I'm gonna do two of these for tacos. So two for tacos, and then we're gonna do a haystack one. And the haystack one, I'm just gonna put one container in there because with the taco meat, because we top it with refried beans and rice, there's a whole lot of extras that goes in there. So I'm just gonna put those in there, put taco seasoning, this is easy, you don't have to do this now, but it's just one more meal done, I can put in the freezer. All right, the next dish I'm gonna do is tater tot casserole. We have not made this in a long time. I just took a drink of water. We used to make it all the time before in a big pan. Kids loved it and I think they got burnout in it. So I have not made it in forever. And then I was just watching my older daughter's one of her menu plans and I had tater tot casserole. I'm like, ooh, I need to make tater tot casserole. So I'm going to do that. I'm doing a small pan. I literally bought a two pound bag of tater tots. Usually we buy the big giant huge one, which is five pounds. So I'm gonna make small, I know, it's gonna be so small. Um, usually you got a cream of chicken and a cream of mushroom soup. I'm gonna take my cream of mushroom, a little bit of water with chicken broth or chicken bouillon and make like the gravy and then put cheese slices on top. And there, well, actually milk in there too, there's milk. Yes, there's milk. So just to make it really simple, put it in the pan and then we'll cover it, I'll put cheese on it, cover it, and you bake it at 350.
All right, next time we do is ground beef stroganoff. This is something we love, absolutely love it, kids love it. I'm just gonna make like a little bit of a beef broth with my cream mushroom soup, sour cream, mix that really good together so that it doesn't separate the beef in there. And then when I go to cook it, and we'll just freeze it like that. When I go to cook it, I'll put it over the curly noodles. It's delicious, we love this. All right, we're gonna make some stuffed pizza shells. Now, this is something my kids do like. I made it before and I'm like, are they even gonna like this? And they actually did. So, if I make too much lick or too much filling, I'll probably do, because I have one more, because I made an extra box because I knew there'd be broken ones. And you know, you know when you make stuff and you always like, oh, it's too short in the pan, so I made extra, but we'll see how it, it fits. So I'm just gonna take ground beef here. I'm gonna put it into my mixing bowl. And then I'm gonna take some, actually I'm gonna take about half that, that's a lot of ground beef. And then I'm gonna take pepperoni. I'm gonna cut this up, put it in here, and a little bit of mozzarella cheese. That's gonna be my filling. And then I probably a little bit of pizza sauce. I'm pulling out the big cans, the big cans. And so this will be my pizza sauce. Mix it in there, pour it in the pan. Simple, easy, delicious. Now remember, much easier to shove it with your hands inside here. This is gonna be good. Just fill them up, stick them in. One more meal, you can put this in jumbo shells. You can do this between layered lasagna. It's also just great, just add it on top of pasta. All right, we're going for a number of meals made or perfection looking meals. I think we're going for the number of meals made. So this one, it was okay. The noodles have sat here, so they're a little bit more sticky together. So basically I opened them up and split them open, put the sauce in, but I kind of should just open them and did like lasagna. Not bad, not bad. Don't do as I say, or do as I say, not as I do, but it'll still taste good. This is it, perfect amount. Put the sauce on cheese, cover it. Another meal finished. Make it look a little prettier on your, on your end. Unless you're doing 50 meals, then it's okay, right? All right, we're getting there. Next dish I'm gonna do is cheeseburger pie. This is new. I'm um, looking at the recipe, I was looking at it. You make your own crust, you pat it in the pan. I'm gonna put that recipe on the screen. I am taking the easier route because you know, it's getting later in the day. I slice my finger and I'm like, okay, I need to find a shortcut here. So I have some puff pastry. Let me show you. And I have one of these in my freezer forever. So I'm gonna use that as my crust. Maybe you could use pie crust or use the one on the screen. It's super simple. I'm just gonna make my life easier and put this in here. So I'm gonna put this in the pan, smush it out, put some holes in a bake in the oven for about, mix it for about five, 10, well, about five minutes. Then while that's baking, I'm gonna mix up my meat mixture and I'll pour it in there top, top with cheese and then cover it and put it in the freezer. And then we'll thaw it. We need it and bake it for 350. It'd be delicious cheeseburger pie. All right, so that tastes pretty good. I added a little bit of ketchup and mustard to it. I'm like that and salt and pepper. Delicious. I hear you. So my pet and the, the crust that I put in here, it's obviously it's puff pastry, so it puffs up and goes down. It's not all the way cooked because I'm gonna bake this in the oven, but I'm just gonna put the meat on there, sprinkle with cheese. That's it, it's an easy, delicious cheeseburger pie. It tastes so good. All right, I'm getting my list taken out. I got all this down here. The last one on here is spaghetti. How simple, because I have that whole can here of pizza sauce. We'll use this for spaghetti sauce, because pizza spaghetti, it tastes the same. It's just, I think this just has like a bay leaf in it. So I'm just gonna put this in here, put some onions in there, some peppers, hamburger, and maybe some garlic. That'll be it, and then uh, we'll 
serve it over noodles. All right, we're moving, moving, getting up to my raw meat. This is all the stuff I cut up yesterday. That's here, so I'm just gonna start and add the ingredients to This is Asian beef slaw wrap. Basically, you're gonna cook this up, heat it. I'm gonna be able to add some, I wanna do some veggies in there, and then I'm gonna serve it on a warm tortilla with some like slaw. You could do broccoli slaw, regular slaw, and then the liquid, and all of it will taste really good on it. All right, the next one is Italian beef sandwiches. Gonna just add the ingredients right in the bag. All right, this is gonna be pepper steak over rice. So I'll just add the ingredients, put it on the screen. All right, so I've got three extra bags of just extra marinated beef for slices, extra beef slices, and this had beef steak wraps, but I think I already have a beef steak wrap. Did I forget one? Beef steak, oh. Beef steak wrap, that was Italian dressing. I totally just added all that into my other one. All right, so the, basically I'm gonna put vinegar, lemon juice in here and some spices. That will take care of the, and a little bit of oil. That'll take care of my, this one. So. Beef steak wrap is just Italian dressing and that totally messed it up, so sorry. And then the other ones I'm just gonna add basically the same kind of ingredients, vinegar, lemon, oil, and some spices. It'll marinate it, any kind of meat to tenderize it, the vinegar, the oil, the lemon, it all will help it, salt and pepper, make it taste delicious. add that seafood one because it's got that little bit of that lemon in it make sure to this is perfect you just basically need some kind of good marinade for it so this will be great I'll be able to take this and if I want I can cook it in my pressure cooker or if I want to cook a bunch of stuff on the smoker I can do that if I want to do it on the stove boil it however you want to cook it there's extra there and then the steak wraps yeah I totally just put the wrong one there but that's okay this is good now all my raw meat is done all my raw beef so, <laughs> Now I'm moving on. I'm going on to the sausage pile now. The sausage pile, which is not very much, so we're getting there. Let me put these in the freezer and pick up a little bit, and then we'll move on to sausage. All right, All right. I count up my dinners. I'm up to 52 dinners right now. Do we just stop or do we keep going? Let's just keep going. This would be two months worth of meals. That's not bad. I think I'll just do my first list. I was going to do all my soups and all my other stuff, but I think I'll stop at just this one. I know, otherwise you'll be here for ever and ever. So next thing I'm gonna do is sausage, red beans and rice. This is simple. This is the way we like it and make it. I'm gonna make two of these up and put them together, put it all together in the bag, real simple. All right, this next dinner is going to be the dinner that is more like, oh, let's just go get pizza tonight. I don't have to get pizza because I have a freezer and we have to do absolutely nothing with them. That's what I want. This one is simple. I was able to find pierogies. Like we have just plain ones at Walmart, but down in my discount store, they had sour cream and onion. They had loaded baked potato, delish. 
so this meal last time i put it in a pan it's simple people are like why do you just literally put sausage cut up and pierogies in a pan because when this box is in the freezer kids see it and they're like especially older ones and they're like "Ooh, i want a snack and they'll heat this up and eat it and then it's gone mamas you gotta be smart you gotta hide your food so if you don't hide it turn it into a freezer meal <laughs> so what i'm gonna do this is probably it is so simple but they love it they have they, the whole thing gets eaten up and it's easy and i'm like oh i don't feel bad serving because they do love it so i'm going to take kielbasa here i have a lot of this so i'm going to chop this up put it in a bag and then put probably two and a half boxes in each bag when i go to make it put it in a um baking pan or like a cookie sheet just bake it in the oven easy they love it it's delicious this is my easy easiest go-to meal simple i don't have to do anything with it so but i'm gonna put it in there because it will get eaten if i do not so let me get this all cut up and put in the bag hello how'd you do i'm not broken i just split in two hope you're fine and got time to do everything you said you would frame stop the past and the memory of you just come running by Pictures of sunny days With your smile in the park Alright, so since some of those pierogies could not fit in the bag, I put them in the air fryer. Make that for myself to eat. Alright, I'm getting there. I'm so getting there. The next one I do is Spanish style. I cut it off. Spanish style noodles with chicken. Alright, so the pasta noodles, it says spaghetti but broken into pieces. These, one of my viewers, I bought this like it was a humongous, humongous, huge bag. I don't even know, five pounds maybe for like a dollar at the discount store. We used it for soup. And then someone said, you need to make this Spanish dish. And I don't know what it was, but I think I found it. So this is how you make it. I'm not going to make the whole thing, but um, it's going to have chicken in it. It has chicken thighs. I'm going to do chicken breast because that's what I have. And then um, sweet Italian sausage because we have mild. We have all this still. So I'm going to do that. Salt and pepper, and it's got oregano, olive oil, onions, garlic, I don't have bay leaves, tomato puree, so I'm gonna do tomato paste, and then um, it's the pasta, so I'm gonna put everything together, maybe add a little bit of veggie broth in there because I have a lot of it, and then, let me read through real quick. All right, so I'm, since I'm gonna have the sausage in there, it's gonna be wrong to make sure I cook that first, and then I'll add the spaghetti to it, We'll find out how that tastes. It looks delicious, Spanish style noodles with chicken and sausage. So basically I'm gonna chop up the sausage, put the chicken in there with all the ingredients, and then I'll go to cook it, and I will heat this all up all the way, and then I'll add this to it, just a little bit of water. It doesn't take that long to cook this, so. All right, let's try this one, it'll be something new. You guys are gonna have to watch now. A lot of you asked me to do what does it look like cooked. Well, <laughs> if you don't, if you've just come here for this day, I film every single day, like every day. So you have to watch the rest of the month, the next two months actually, and see how I make these meals because I don't like just do this video and that's it. I post every day. So if I were to put together, like save this video, I wouldn't be able to do it because I have such a, I have huge videos every single day that I do. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So I'm trying to tell you how to make it afterwards, but um, I'll put the recipe on the screen. You could do it yourself, but if you want to follow through the month, I'll make it sometime this next month or two. All right, change of plans. I'm gonna actually cook the sausage beforehand because you're supposed to like kind of brown it. I don't have to, but I feel like I'm going to this and I can do some onions and peppers in there. And then I'll put that back in my bag with the chicken, all the ingredients. When I go to make it, I'm gonna add this, heat it up, and I'm gonna put 12 ounces of the pasta in there, a little bit of water just till it covers it, and then just kind of cook it down. And that will be delicious. So let's cook some sausage. All right, so this thing, I just added chicken to it, and then I added salt and pepper, and I didn't have just a regular soda man Italian seasoning. Then I've got onions and peppers over there sauteing, so I'll just add that. I'm adding garlic to it, and then I'm adding that scoop of tomato paste there. I added a little bit of vegetable broth because that's what I have left over, and then I'm gonna put my sausage in here. Now, this is gonna be it. Then when I go to make it, I will be adding 12 ounces of that spaghetti in there. Actually, I'm gonna heat it up and make sure my sausage is cooked good. Then I'm gonna add that sp those little this, the pasta in there that's like looks like a broken spaghetti noodle and enough water to cover it and then let it like kind of um you know suck up that moisture in that water and then boil down and then i can top it with parmesan cheese so we will try it and see if it's any good
All right, so getting there, getting there. So I just took that, put it in there. I don't usually eat that sausage with the casing. I'm like, ooh, I don't know about that, but follow the recipe. So this, I'll leave it here. Greg will eat this. I know he likes that. So what I'm gonna do, I have one more package of this to use up. One more, I got this for like, I don't know, $2, and it's like two pounds of sweet or mild Italian sausage. So I have a recipe for sausage and pepper pasta. So basically, I have to open these up, pull up the disgusting stuff, you know, pull up the casing, just saute it with some onions and peppers. And then um, I think that's all you do, right? It's peppers and onions, and then you, and garlic. And then you put it with pasta. So I will just do the, and so, it's called sausage and pepper pasta. So I'm gonna cook my Italian sausage, it's one pound, I'll be doing two, with onions, peppers, garlic, a little bit of um, olive oil, and then I will cook pasta separately, and then I will add that to it, and then you can top it with like Parmesan cheese. So that'll be easy. I'm just gonna cook stuff to get it out of my freezer. So let's pull the casing off the sausage. Ugh. All right, I asked for no judgment on that sausage. That would not be my favorite thing to do. And it's not my favorite thing to eat. And I don't even know who will eat that one. But <laughs> there's a few that like the sausage. So I was okay with leaving some of it behind. I didn't feel too bad. Kind of gross, Ooh, but I did it. So that is cooking over here. I'm gonna chop up an onion and two peppers. I got a red one and a green one. I'm just gonna cut them up real tiny, put them in there to saute, and then uh, that's gonna be it, and then garlic. And then we will put that in the freezer. And then we can add it to pasta with some cheese. That's an easy meal there. Probably end up doing two of those. I feel like it would be a really good dish. Hopefully they will agree as well. So, all right, we're gonna keep going. gonna have a um like I said I didn't like sausage I bet you this will be really good it tastes really good the flavor so I'm just gonna add this let it cool and I'm gonna put them in two Ziploc bags and that'll be two meals and I'll just heat pasta up and cook it put it with it put parmesan cheese or I have a sagio sagio cheese on it let me just add salt and pepper that's it easy meal another two done this pepper pasta smells so good so I'm gonna let this cool off here and then I will put it into two bags I had to go to dollar store bags. I totally, I went freezer meal making day and I'm out of bags. I know, I had to send Greg <laughs> yesterday, thank goodness. So all I'll do is add pasta to it and cheese. That's it, that one's done. All right, next one we're moving on to is taco twist. Gonna show the ingredients on the screen, just not gonna cook the pasta, just the ingredients. We'll put it in the pot with, look at that, little hair piece, with pasta and it'll be delicious. Okay, we're still going, we're making hungry man macaroni. So I'm gonna add in here all the ingredients, I'll put them on the screen. What you do when you go to cook, <laughs> that one piece drives me crazy. I need to fix my hair. We're almost done, I feel like I'm almost done, so why touch your hair, Amy? Um, what I'll do is add everything in here but chicken broth, because that'll take up more space in the bag. So when I go to heat it, I'll heat everything up, that's in this bag, and then when it's pretty warm, I'll add in 14 ounces of chicken broth, and eight ounces of elbow macaroni and then cook it until the pasta is done about 10 minutes and then serve with Parmesan cheese. Easy, this will be simple and done. All right, I lied, I said I was gonna add the chicken broth when I made it. There's enough room in the bag. So I put it in there, all I have to do is add the elbow pasta. Done, another dinner, done. All right, we're on these one pot pasta dishes. That's what I'm doing right now. So the next one, I'm gonna put everything in the bag here, put it on the screen. It's another dish that 
add the whole bag, heat it up, add the pasta to it, and just let it cook down until the pasta's done. Easy, easy pressure cooker meal day when you got busy running things to get done. All right, I knew there was a missing recipe for this leftover sausage. I'm like, why do I have extra? I shouldn't have extra. It's bow ties with sausage, tomatoes, and cream pasta. So I'm gonna put the recipe on the screen, put it in my bag. The only thing I'm not gonna put in here is my bow tie pasta. Everything will heat up. I'll cook the bow tie separate and add it to this. Very easy. getting to the end I promise my next one is gonna be a hamburger helper home style dish so basically put everything in this bag here and then when I go to serve it I'll heat it up and just add crinkly like egg noodles to it one package very simple All right, I am done. Oh my goodness, I am, well, I'm almost done. I'm done with meals. I don't think I can fit any more in my freezer, so I think I just need to stop. Because a good indication when you need to stop is if you can't shove any more in your freezer. <laughs> so, I've been working for about 10 hours, but I have been doing other things too. So I wish I could say that I've had zero interruptions and that I'm just, all I can do is cook all day long and that's my only responsibility in life, but it's not. Unfortunately, I have children, I have a lot of children, and I need mom, and I have to do this, I have to answer the door, I have to answer the phone. All those good things that go along with um, you know part of being a homemaker so <sighs> normally now by the time I'm done making food I'm like I'm done I'm so done and I don't want to do any more food but I'm getting smarter always put a meal out for dinner that night so I actually saved I think it's Asian Korean Korean lettuce wraps. I didn't think, what is it? Kore Asian Korean, I had a whole bunch of dishes. Korean lettuce wraps is chicken strips with this stuff. You have to look back in the video and see what it actually is. That we're gonna have with lettuce tonight. Easy, and we got strawberries in there and grapes. It'll be an easy. Greg's still got steak. He can have that from yesterday. And then I left out chicken lo mein, so tomorrow I can make the chicken lo mein, and then I think the broccoli, beef and broccoli slaw Asian wrap has to be eaten up. I'm trying to use the ones, I made myself a little note, the ones that have like fresh stuff I gotta use up. And then when I was putting stuff in the freezer, I kept out the ones that kind of I needed up on top, because sometimes you're just gonna get lost in there because there's so much stuff in there. But at least I know what I have to have now. I left the ones on the bottom that you know can sit in there for a little bit. So are you ready for a total? All right, I went through, if someone can prove me wrong and by going back and counting all the meals, but I have counted up 65 meals today. 65 meals, people, that's a lot of meals. That is like two months worth of dinners, which is awesome. Now, with that said, they are smaller size because most of the time it's just the kids and I, Greg's, I mean, Greg's here too, but not all the time. So I made them that size, but I know Easter's coming and we're gonna have family here. So I might have to take two of those and do one as dinner. You know what I mean? So it might be a little bit less or I might use some for lunches. The only thing I did not do, can you believe that I didn't do something? Yes was all my soups and egg rolls. I wanted to do some egg roll things, but that, another day. I can do that next week or the next week. Whenever I am after my comatose of being exhausted from cooking. <laughs> so, And then some soups, but I want to free, free up some space in the freezer because it's pretty full and I just have to wait. So I'm just gonna have to wait on that one. But I did set aside all the ingredients I needed, like chicken and beef for that. I put that aside and put that in the fridger, freezer, I mean, for another day. And I still have a whole lot of chicken left, like all this is extra that's a lot of chicken so I'm gonna put this in containers I'll use it for something I know I would you can heat it up put on tortillas with some cheese you can put it with salsa anything pasta anything you want but I'm gonna put that in a container I have one more thing of cream and mushroom here so I will just freeze this and I've got tomato paste I'm gonna put in little containers and that's it oh my goodness I got my dishes done 
I got lazy and just put my plastic containers in the dishwasher. That's all that's in there is plastic containers with all the meat. I know, because I, I don't hear it being on. Yeah, I don't want to wash those. I'm tired of washing dishes. <laughs> so, and my girls are gone. They're out for the day. So that's okay. So I'm going to let the dishwasher wash those. I can do that. Then that's it. I'm not going to like, I'm just going to wipe stuff down. I'm not going to do a deep clean. I'm going to save that for another day. And then um, I still have stuff on the table I didn't use. How did that not get used? Oh, because that's soup. I'm like, how did that not get used up? Sorry. I'm like, why did that stuff not get used? It's for soups. Um, it's just some cans and some pasta. I'll put that away. Probably not today. I probably won't do anything else today, but go sit down and relax. Put my feet up for a little bit. Enjoy my coffee. So this is cooking. Let me put away tomato paste and chicken. Call it a day. That sound good? 65 meals. I feel like I can be done for the day. But great meals, all good things. I'm going to work my hardest at putting a link to all these videos. <laughs> I mean, all, all these recipes on my blog. Because a lot of you asked me for written recipes of them. And I'm so bad because I don't link them. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put every single one that I have on my one blog page and put it over there so you can go get them all at one place if you don't wanna just screenshot it off the video here. So let's put this stuff away and then we're almost gonna be done. We're almost done, almost done. All right, I am finished, all cleaned up, done, dishwashers running. I just threw a load of washcloth towels because I use a lot of those during the day in. Took my apron off and I'm like, I am finished. So let me show you what my freezers are looking like right now. It's very jammed. These are very unstable because these are not frozen. So I've got to kind of get them frozen so I can kind of stack a little bit better, but there is just stuff shove 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 in there and then i've got this whole door covered this freezer is being utilized right here we'll be able to move those over there as well and then this freezer is got the big pans in it that's just kind of holding it there but that's looking good a successful freezer day all right so hopefully that gives you some good ideas for some freezer meals things that you can make in your home i am excited the key was not to do too many pans and do mostly bags that way it doesn't use up that much space in your freezer so all right i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and i'm gonna see you guys again tomorrow yes i'm not gonna be sleeping you'll see me <laughs> all right have a great rest of your day we'll see you bye for those of you that want to stay i'm gonna read our psalm for the day Psalm 51, have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the greatness of your compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and guilt, and cleanse me from my sin, for I am conscious of my transgressions, and I acknowledge them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight, so that you are justified when you speak your sentence and faultless in your judgment. I was brought forth in a state of wickedness. In sin, my mother conceived me, and from my beginning, I too was sinful. Behold, you desire truth in the innermost being, and in the hidden part of my heart, you will make me know wisdom. Purify me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness and be satisfied. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from your, my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right and steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted and returned to you. Rescue me from blood guiltiness, O God, the God of my salvation. Then my tongue will sing joyfully of your righteousness and your justice. O Lord, open my lips, that my mouth may declare your praise. For you do not delight in sacrifice, or else I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offerings. My only sacrifice, acceptable to God, is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, broken with sorrow for sin, thoroughly penitent, such, O God, you will not despise. 
by your favor do good to zion may you rebuild the walls of jerusalem then will you delight in the sacrifices of righteousness in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings then young bulls will be offered on your altar all right have a beautiful day we'll see you bye